touchdown. We need to be able to execute the fundamentals on offense, defense, and special teams. They're going to run a play, and Rutgers is not fooled. And yeah. he's done it again. And then do it over and over and over again. They're coming and blocked. Blocked. Yeah. Because the team that does it better is usually the team that wins. Live from Quaker Steak and Lube on US-1 in Edison, this is the Kyle Flood Show. Your chance to talk with the head coach of the Scarlet Knights. The Kyle Flood Show is also brought to you by AT&T, mobilizing your world, and by Pepsi. Live in the moment. The beat starts at Pepsi.com. Pepsi, live for now. To be part of the show, call 855-FLOOD-44. That's 855-356-6344. Now, let's go live to Quaker Steak and Lube in Edison. Here's the voice of the Scarlet Knights, Chris Carlin. Welcome, everybody, to the Kyle Flood Show. It is week number three of the Rutgers football season as the Scarlet Knights head out west to Penn State this weekend, a Saturday night affair as they take on their rivals, the Nittany Lions. Chris Carlin alongside former Scarlet Knight Eric Legrand. Eric, good to see you. Hey, good to see you too, Chris. And joining us now, acting head coach of the Scarlet Knights, that is Norris Wilson. Coach, good to have you with us. Great to be here. Now, for those who are unaware why Coach Wilson is joining us today instead of Coach Flood, earlier today, Coach Flood was suspended three games and fined $50,000 as a result of the ongoing investigation into impermissible contact with a professor. Uh, the entire report was put out earlier today. Robert Barchi, the president at Rutgers, is the man who uh, enacted the suspension and fine for Coach Flood for what happened. And we have Coach Flood's statement. We're going to read that for you right now. Earlier today, I met with President Barchi in his office, and he informed me of my three-game suspension and the imposed fine. At Rutgers, we hold our student athletes to high academic standards befitting a great university. We adhere to a higher standard, one that I am responsible to be aware of. I take full, ad full responsibility and accept the consequences of my actions. I care deeply about my student athletes' academic performance. As the head coach, when I recruit players, my responsibility to them and their families is to do all I can to make sure they leave Rutgers with a degree and are prepared for a successful life off the football field. I am proud that our program has ranked in the top 10% of the APR eight years in a row. That success doesn't happen by accident. It's due to our top to bottom program culture, emphasizing the importance of academic success, and it's why we have a robust academic support staff that is second to none. I will always instill in my players that they have a responsibility to themselves, their families, our university, and its alumni to perform well in the classroom, and I will never stop caring about their academic performance. Moving forward, I will make sure that I adhere to all university policies, and I will place an even greater emphasis with our staff on knowing, understanding, and following every university, Big Ten, and NCAA rule. In deference to our student athletes, coaches, and staff moving forward, I will not provide further comment at this time. So a couple of things of note. As we said, uh, in that report, Coach Flood was found to have had impermissible contact with a professor. But it is also important to note that the university found no academic impropriety whatsoever within that investigation. And uh, that is one of the points of emphasis that should be made as well. Coach Flood also, in the middle there, whether or not he had violated a university ethics policy, it, the statement from the uh, entire report says that he was found to have possibly have done that, not definitively, not uh, that he had not. Um, before we move forward, and it's obviously a situation that will be difficult to comment on, we're going to welcome you to be a part of the show. We're going to talk an awful lot about football in a huge game this week, by the way, against Penn State at 855-FLOOD44 and also uh, on Twitter, at Rutgers Radio. Uh, you talk about the suspension and the fine, and I'm going to speak for myself here just in terms of my personal opinion. 
I'd say a tad excessive. The coach Flood has uh, acknowledged that uh, he did not handle this situation the way that he should have, but I'll go back to the academic impropriety part of it. And there have been other universities recently that have been guilty of thorough academic impropriety for an extended period of time for years. And one such suspension uh, resulted in a nine-game suspension of a basketball coach. So I think when you look at it comparatively speaking, perhaps it's a, a tad excessive in that regard. Again, my opinion in that. Eric, I'll ask you for your comment on everything that's gone on here. Yeah, it's definitely, you know, a tad excessive if you, you know, really read into the report. You know, I know Coach Flood personally. I play, you know, get going against him as my offensive line coach, and I just know how much he cares about his players and the thing – you know, willing to put his job on the line for a player. And, you know, it's just, you know, sad to see, you know, all this going on. But, you know, he accepted his, you know, the consequences as a man, and now it's time to move forward. Um, Coach Wilson, we will ask for your comment. Uh, I'm not sure what you're comfortable, not comfortable saying, but uh, whatever you want to say about this, please feel free. Well, in my time at Rutgers, uh, since uh, March of 2012, Coach Flood's always been uh, – Student athletes first. Let's make sure to have everything that they need to, to be successful. As he stated in his statement, I'm not going to speak on uh, what penalties he received. Um, the president of the university and board of governors handled things of, those, of that matter. But what I also wanted to say that about the suspension is Coach Flood's going to be at the day-to-day -day, every day for three weeks. He just won't be on the Saturday game day. So he's going to be around his players. He's going to be around his team. And he's going to be making sure the team prepares the right way for each game that, that's on our schedule, in particular the game that's coming up this week. And the Scarlet Knights are headed for Happy Valley, as we have talked about to take on Penn State. And we have an opportunity to talk an awful lot of football. Take your phone calls at 855-FLOOD44. That's 855-356-6344. Also, tweet us your question at Rutgers Radio. So, who is Norris Wilson? This mm -hmm. is an interesting story, to say the least. Coach, you're the former head coach at Columbia University, and you came over to the banks a few years back. You're the associate head coach and now acting head coach uh, on game days here for the next three games. Tell us about yourself and tell the fans about your journey in getting here. All right, first I'm going to say if you call me associate head coach, I'm going to ask for a raise. So if you, <laughs> I'm the assistant head coach. Assistant. But if you want to call me associate head coach, I'm, I, I'm inclined to ask for a raise. <laughs> Um, and P Chris is not going to tell you that he and I worked together back before the last Ice Age at Bucknell <laughs> University. He would drive out to central Pennsylvania and, and watch us get, get our teams ready to go out there. Um, it's odd, Chris, that this situation has made it good. Rutgers and Columbia are uh, brother and sister schools. Columbia's old King's College and Rutgers is old Queen's College. And I'm, uh, I was head coach at old King's College for a while now. Unfortunately, be head coach at Rutgers on, on three Saturdays coming up. So I'm, at some point, I'm sure I'm going to be the answer to the final Jeopardy question. Um, <laughs> now, t t hit me again with what you want me to talk to you about. Well, Who am I? Yeah. I'm father of three. My, mother's, my wife is uh, mother of the year. Uh, when Pookie gets here, everybody's going to have to leave because she's going to be the loudest child <laughs> here in the space. Um, and I'm warning you now because she's on her way. Um, I got a great job. I get an opportunity to work with some great running backs. Everyone thinks I have this great problem to have. You know, I got Josh Hicks, and I got Rob Martin, and I got Paul James, and I got Justin Goodwin. And it doesn't matter which one I put out there. They can get the job done. But they all want to be out there at the same time, and, and that's going to be tough to do because we have to, might have to take some offensive linemen off the field to have all four of them out there at the same time. <laughs> but they come to work every day. Um, I'm hard on them. I'm hard on them like I'm hard on my children, and I know them like I know my children. They all are, have to be approached differently in how you correct them and how you teach them and how you prepare them. And they get some things the same and, and some things I have to give to them independently. But they know when their name's called and it's time to get out on the field, they're going to go out and perform as best they can. Uh, they're going to give us their best every Saturday. Uh, are they mistake-free? No, they're not mistake-free. Shoot, the guy coaching them is not mistake-free. Sometimes they overcome their coaching and they go out and do some great things. But they enjoy competing and they enjoy being at, at Rutgers and they make it easy for me to come to work. Um, I have a relationship with a lot of players on the team. Um, Sometimes we just sit and talk just about things, about how their day's going, uh, how's class going, is there anything I can help them with. I uh, have to check in with home to make sure everybody knows that they're okay. Uh, 
to just know the guys in your room just kind of puts you on the island. You got to you got to know the guys playing D line. You got to know the guys playing defensive back. You know, the, the guy playing quarterback is going to be handing the ball to the running backs. You better have a relationship with some of the offensive linemen because they you're hoping that they're going to open up some space for your guys to run. So I try not to just pigeonhole myself and and just zero in on my guys. I try to make sure that I I know who the other players are in the program also. Uh, coach, I wanted to ask you, you know, you, since you're the running backs coach, and we you know we've just seen the two games and what these running backs can do. How hard of a decision is it on you to put the player in at a certain time and get them rolling at a certain times? Well, see, that's Coach Flesh's decision. Nah. I just I just take my lead from him. But it, it's tough sometimes. It's tough. Uh, you sit and you watch. You, you got to look and see who's had a good week of practice. You know, sometimes a, a guy will be nicked up or have something ailing on him. You know, and you know how the season goes and – you know, you've been pounding on somebody all season. All of a sudden, you you can't pass protect as good as you used to yeah. at the beginning. No one's 100% after the first day of camp. Um, but they know that they're being counted on to give their best and do their job. And I can turn around at any point and just point at one of them and say, hey, you're up. And they pull their hat on, on and they're ready to go. And that's all they look for on Saturday. They don't find out who's playing till Saturday and who's going in till when, till after the ball's kicked. And we got, I'll point at them and say, hey, you're up. And they get, they get in the huddle and they go do the job. When you think about how you got here and, and your entire career, not only as a head coach, as an assistant, as you said, you were at Bucknell. You were, of course, a longtime assistant up at UConn. We're not going to hold that against you. Sure. But uh, at the same time, uh, what, are, what are the philosophies that you have always taken through your coaching career? Be earnest with your players. Uh, you have to be because your players have to trust that you have their best interest in heart. Sometimes you're going to say something to the players that they're not going to like, but if they, they come and ask the question, you have to give them an honest answer and, and try not to color it up. You have to give them everything they need to be successful, and you have to hold yourself accountable. I wholeheartedly believe that what you see on film is how the, the player interpreted what you taught them. So I've changed a lot of things on, on how I teach my players. I'll teach it to the players, and then I'll ask them to get in front of the room and teach me what I just taught them just to see how they heard how I presented it. And if something, if they use different words, but I understand that it means what I said, I'll let it go. Because sometimes kids have to use different words to express themselves in the words that I used. But if it's wholeheartedly different, then I need to reteach it again. Uh, we're always striving for perfection. I let, I let my guys know at the end of each night, hey, we had this many missed assignments. We had this many balls on the ground. We had this many loafs. We got to be faster to our route. You know, we missed a blitz pickup. So I keep them, they get a steady dose of what their correction is. And with those corrections, you got to give them some sugar also. Hey, we did this better. You know, we did that better. So it's not all negative. When you're a football coach, if you want to go in and see a bunch of negative guys, Go watch film after practice with some football coaches. They run the bad plays back 17 times. Good play come up one time. All right, here we go. What's the next one? Bad play 17 times, running back, trying to figure out what's wrong. So you got to give them – you got to give the kids some positive reinforcement along with the correction and just drive them forward, drive them forward, show them what they can do, push them past where they think their limit is, and they'll get better. Show them where they got better, and they'll continue to get better. Have you, have you seen yourself using different – philosophies that you've learned over the years at different coaching jobs or you just try to stick to one thing that you learned here and go forward with that? I've pulled things from from different people that I've been around. You know, I was trained as an offensive line coach and before I was a head coach, I was an offensive line coach, shoot, since 1990. And I played offensive line and, I, and Coach Flood brought me here and put me in a room and said, you're going to be the running backs coach. So the first thing I did was start calling some running back coaches mm -hmm. and have them send me some drills and explain the drills to me and and we just kind of felt our way through it. And I talked to the players because the players are out on the field playing the game. So I said, hey, tell me what I can do to make it better for you. What do you need? Do you need more catches from the quarterbacks? Do you need more, more routes running individual? Do you need more looks at what the blitzes are? What, do we, what am I not giving you that's hindering your preparation? And when you get that feedback from the players, it helps you to get them more ready for the game. Our telephone number, 855-FLOOD-44. We've got a couple of calls up already. We're going to get to them in just a few moments. You can also tweet us your questions 
at Rutgers Radio. And if you're in attendance here and you have a question for Coach Wilson, come on up front, see our man Jimmy right over here in the Scarlet Knight shirt, and we will get you on the air. So we're going to step aside, take our first time out. Stay with us. This is the Kyle Flood Show. Need a place to watch all the pro games? Look no further than Quaker Steak and Lou. Best Wings USA on Route 1 in Edison. 50 TVs, great game day specials starting at just $2, and the best wings in the USA with over 25 different wing sauces. Enjoy our outdoor patio and barn that's open all year round, even in the winter. Give us a call, 732-777-WING. We cater events of any size, dining in or to go. Quaker Steak and Lou, 561 Route 1 in Edison, 732-777-WING. At AT AT&T, we're all about the perks, like getting $300 credit per line when you switch to AT&T with a smartphone trade-in and purchase of any smartphone on AT&T Next. That's three perks in one. Get all the perks when you switch to the network with the nation's strongest 4G LTE signal. AT&T, mobilizing your world. Limited time, each $300 requires a port-in, eligible purchase, activation, and trade-in. $100 bill credit within 90 days. $200 trading credit or promo card. Taxes, fees, restrictions apply. Claim based only on national carriers. Average 4G LTE signal strength. See store for details. This is the Rutgers IMG Sports Network. Consider the cup holder. There's probably one feeling empty next to you right now. No Pepsi, no hope. Just look at it, won't you? All across the country, cup holders are being neglected. Instead of Pepsi, they're being filled with loose change or crumpled up receipts. But you can help. Get a Pepsi and refresh a cup holder's life. Our thirsts are counting on it. In fact, I'm having one right now. Ah, that is refreshing. Pepsi, refresh yourself. Refill your cup holder. Hey, Rutgers season ticket holders, are you tired of sitting on those hard bleachers with no back support? Then we have a deal for you. For a limited time, you can reserve a night cushion for only $60 for the season. That's less than $9 a game. Permanently attached to your ticket location, night cushions provide padded comfort for your back and bottom that's second to none. So don't wait. Visit nightcushion.com. That's nightcushion with a K, dot com. Or call 800-729-0445 to reserve today. We are back at Quaker Steak and Lube on Route 1 in Edison for this week's edition of the Kyle Flood Show. Sitting in for the coach, who, uh, as we learned earlier today, will be suspended for the next three games by the university, is assistant assistant head coach Norris Wilson. I would give you a raise if I could and make you associate, but that's not in my hands, so to speak. Well, yeah, so you, you holding yourself back. I'll work on it. You need friends in the media, you know. I mean, I could I could be that guy, maybe pump you up a little bit. You know, the media, that's the last bastion from the First Amendment. Everything else has been erased. <laughs> Freedom of the press. <laughs> Coach, uh, uh, two things. Number one, I should mention that you've had a lot of success in your career as an offensive coordinator as well up at UConn. You were a finalist for the Broyles Award one year. So you've really done everything that a coach can do in terms of the different roles that you can have. So... Take us through what that experience is like in being in all the different roles. I'll tell you, I'm going to start with this experience. Okay. Being an assistant coach after being a head coach. You have a greater appreciation of the platter, because it's not a plate, of the platter that the head coach has to deal with, having been a head coach, and now you're an assistant. So you don't go banging on the head coach's office door with more things to put on his platter. You try to solve problems before they should get to him, and, and you bring him solutions instead. Because when you're the head coach, 99% of your conversations are somebody asking you for something. <laughs> There's nobody coming in to check on you, see how you're doing. Can they go out and get you something? They want you to give them something. So when you're an assistant coach, after you've been a head coach, you have a greater appreciation that assistant coach means to assist the head coach and whatever he wants done. Coach Flood says, hey, Norris, take my truck down, get it washed. I say, which car wash you want me to go to? <laughs> so now, as an assistant coach, before I was a head coach, you know, I had all the answers. Oh, I knew exactly what I was going to do when I was a head coach. I'm, I'm not going to do it this way. That's dumb. I'm not doing it that way. And then as soon as you become a head coach, you say, I see why he did it that way. Mm-hmm. So 
you, you gain perspective and everything when you, when you make that, that climb up, when you become the offensive coordinator or you become the defensive coordinator from being an assistant on offense or defense. You have some ideas that you have that you always thought might work, and you implement those ideas, and some of them work and some of them don't. Um, we had a unique way of doing things. When I, when I worked at UConn, we just split the work up. You know, I was the, the coordinator, and I put a guy in charge of the blitzes and put a guy in charge of the red zone, put a guy in charge of the pass game. I was in charge of short yardage goal line, and I took the run game, and we'd get together, and we'd put it all together, and we'd make it roll. And we all had input on what was going to be called and when it was going to be called and what formations we were going to be in. And because I was the coordinator, I got the, the awards or nominated for the awards or the opportunity to be a head coach. But it was five of us working together that for whatever success, success we had while I was UConn that made those things happen. And, you know, Coach, you know, these are the things we don't get to see behind the scenes. You know, with, with Coach Fluff, we know what goes into a game plan with him. Well, what he has told us, what goes into a game plan with you and the assistants now that you guys are working with behind the scenes that no one gets to see? Well, we all get in there and we watch a lot of film. And we watch, we watch a lot of film on our own, and then we get in small groups and we, and we watch more film. Uh, and we, we sit in the room behind the door and, and we bounce ideas off each other and we see how they fit into a plan for the opponent that week. And – you, a lot of ideas go up, and that list starts to get pared down. As you know, there's only so many calls in a game. There's going to be, unless you're an at-the-line team, there's only going to be 70 calls in a game. So if you got 40 runs on the sheet, if you run each one twice, that's 80 runs. So you, you have to be diligent and, and making sure you have enough but not having too much. But it's better to have it and not need it than to need it and not have it. So – you know, we've got some, some things that we like to do and we talk about it and see just because we have a play doesn't mean it, it's a great play that week because they're all good plays, but you can't run all of them. So you have to go up and, and Ben has the final say on what we're going to do. And he'll ask our input and say, hey, why do you like this, first of all? Because he's watched every, every snap, every means without exception. Ben McDaniels is just a film hound. He, he's going to watch every snap. Snaps from 1943, he's got those snaps up. You know, they, did, they ran this blitz in 1943 against Westchester. Um, so he's going to watch every snap, and he's going to want to know why we brought this idea forth, and we have to have some valid reasons as to why we brought that idea forth, and if he understands and if, it's in, if it fits into his scheme of how he wants to attack a team that week, it'll go up on the board, and we'll wrap it out and get it ready to go for game day. Let's take our first phone call of the night. One of our regulars, it is March, uh, Mark in Branchburg. Mark, you're on the Kyle Flood Show. How are you? Hello? Mark, you're on the air. Hello? Hello? Hello, Mark. I think your radio's on and it delays. I can't huh? hear you. All right, well, that, we'll put them on hold for a sec, see if we can get that straightened out. Sit tight on that. Um, we'll also take questions on Twitter, too, by the way. Uh, at Rutgers Radio, you can send them to at Rutgers Radio. Um, the relationship between players and their position coach. I'll ask both of you about this from both perspectives. As a, as a position coach, how does that relationship differ than it did in the other roles that you've had? You, you sir. You want me to go first? Yeah. Um. The relationship between players – see, my perspective, I don't know if it's different than anyone else's perspective. I played football before when dinosaurs ruled the earth. So – and, you know, there was no time limits. And, and, and my position coach, he got us ready for life. We thought we were getting ready for football games. And he got us ready for life. He was hard on us and he dog cussed us and called us everything but a child of God. But on Saturday, we'd do whatever we could to make sure he was successful. Um, and we were successful. And I – Having done that so long, I, when I started out as a coach, that's what I, that's a, I thought that was the only way to be a coach. And then I realized that there was a lot more teaching to coaching than, than a lot of people understand. So, and as I evolved as a coach, I got closer with my players when I started teaching to them more and not losing my message and my method of delivery. You can get a lot across to a young man or young woman, if you just speak to them in a regular tone and just make a correction and say, hey, this is how I want you to do it. And they know if I, my 
octave level should become elevated, they know that something drastic has gone wrong. And they need to be diligent in understanding what I'm saying. But just if you pull them to the side, show them what they did wrong, and ask them about themselves. If the only conversations you're going to have with the players at your position are about football, then they're not going to have any idea that you care about them as a person. What are their aspirations? At some point, the football is taken away from all of us. Right now, it's not taken away from me because I'm a coach. But at some point, it's going to be taken away. As a player, it's taken away. I got a chance to coach. As a coach, it'll be taken away. So I ask these guys, what do you, when the football's taken away, what do you want to do? What do you want to be? What did you want to be when you was a kid? When you were a little guy, I wanted to be a football player. Okay, what was the second thing you wanted to be? And what are you studying? What are you majoring in? What are you planning to do with that? Hey, I, I'm thinking about going in business. Well, what aspect of business? You want to be in marketing, advertising? You want to be the guy that puts the soda on the shelves? I mean, what do you mean? You want to own a business. Anybody can own a business. Will it be a successful business? And try to give them some insights on life because they all, by and large, want to be grown before they need to be grown. You know, you got an opportunity to be in college and learn some great things, whatever your passion is in college. Once you leave college, the light bill comes every month. Oh, it does. <laughs> <laughs> the car note comes every month. Mm -hmm. So enjoy this time that you're in college and, and get yourself a great education. Pre prepare yourself for life and come to me and just maybe I could, some of my life experiences can help you. And if you have a problem, I want it to be where you can come in, you can shut the door and say, Coach, look, I got a problem. Mm. You know, and it, you know, I need some help. And I, I start every answer with, look, I'm not going to tell you what to do, but this is what I would do. Now, you, you take it from there. But it, if you can build a relationship with your players, if you can get a modicum of trust between themselves and you, it'll go a long way. It'll go a long way. We have uh, the players over. They were badgering me. You know, they, they, when they can't get to me, they go to my wife. When's coach going to have us over for the summer barbecue? <laughs> That means I got to sit out in the sun all day cooking. <laughs> but they come over, you know, and Rob's got a chair that he sits in. And then Pookie's going to grab PJ and go outside and Devin Carter, and they're going to run around the yard and play uh, tag. This year they came over. They were playing some, some car racing game on the Wii U. So it, it's, it's more than just the football for us in the running back room. It's, it's having a, a true relationship and, and being able to express yourself and say, hey, coach, I'm mad at you, and this is what I'm mad at you about. And me saying, okay, I understand that, but this is why I did what I did. And, or, coach, I got a problem. You know, I'm struggling in this class. What can we do? I said, well, you better get in there and get some tutoring because we need you here. We want you here. You better make sure you take care of your coursework, and we're trying to get everybody in the room. This past semester, we had a contest in the running back room to see who could get the highest GPA. And we challenged one of our players to say, you can't get over a 3.0 GPA. We know you can't. You can't do it. And he came back with a 3.2. Nice. So it, it, they want to be challenged. They want to be challenged in the right way. And they want to show that they can do what they're here to do, and that's be good students. Let's get our first question from a gentleman in attendance tonight. Sir, what's your name? Where are you from? Oh, Chad from North Brunswick. Chad, how are you? Good. Just want to say, just listening to your coach, I think the team's in good hands on, sat on Saturday, so I'm looking forward to seeing you out there on Saturday. Um, the question I have is, since we were at a running backs coach, I've watched the first two games, and it looks like, um, uh, uh, what's the second running back? I'm forgetting his name right now. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Hicks. Who's the second looks like Hicks. Back. Josh Hicks. Okay. Josh Hicks looks like he has a, he has a, a different gear uh, you know, through the first two games. I'm not sure if PJ's totally healed from his surgery, but... He looks like he has a different gear, and I was wondering, this week, um, are you going to continue with the you know running back by committee, or are you going to ride the hot hand? If you see Hicks is is uh, breaking tackles and 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 looking good out there, are you going to continue to ride him in the game? We aren't going to give Coach Franklin any information. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Well, Coach Flood and I have discussed the running back rotation as we usually discuss the running back rotation okay. at breakfast on game day. Okay. Mm -hmm. So your philosophy is to do whatever you're going to do. We're going to do what we feel is in the best interest of the team on that specific day. All right. Okay. 
I like good that. luck. Thank yeah, you. it's been a couple of years since you've been a head coach, but you certainly sound like one. <laughs> I like you. Got coach. that covered. Don't give up. Don't give up any information. Nothing. <laughs> He's got a spy in here somewhere. Might be Pookie. <laughs> We'll give the we'll give Mark and Branchburg another shot here. See if we can get them on the air. Yeah, Mark, yeah. you're on the Kyle Plug Show. How are you? Good. How are you doing, Chris? Good. All right, Mark. You have a question for Coach Wilson? Yeah, I, I do. But one thing, Chris, I was in school when Coach Boylan was there. Uh, he's a great man. I just I'm glad. I'm really happy to see that. Uh, Joe Boylan will be our our new color commentator for basketball broadcast this year uh, for Eddie Jordan's Scarlet Knights, and we're excited to have Coach Boylan back on the bank. It's going to be a lot of fun. Like two things, uh, Janarian Grant, I've been watching Rutgers for 40 years, was fantastic on Saturday. And my next comment, you probably can't comment on it, but Washington State threw the ball 66 times. You mean to tell me they didn't get flagged for one holding penalty? I mean, there's something wrong with that. <laughs> Chris, he's talking to you. <laughs> <laughs> Mark, you're right. There's something wrong with that. <laughs> now, listen. 66 passes? It's what they do, and they also get rid of the ball pretty quickly, yeah, too. Uh, he also was uh, going to ask about um, the uh, the penalties in the game and just how much they hurt. When you work on the corrections, when you go back and look at the tape, um, I guess, was there any more clarity to it? Was there the sense of here's what we did wrong here, guys, that kind of thing? Definitely. If you're going to go correct the players, you have to be able to tell them what they did wrong why they did it wrong. You, you got to get the player's mindset from in that moment. Um, now, we've been having Sundays off because, you know, each week the kids have to have a mandatory day off so we don't meet with our players on Sunday. So on, on Monday when we go in and make the corrections, we've had an opportunity to watch the tape two, three, four times and, and make sure that we're right on what needs to be corrected. And then we uh, try to get the player's mindset. Hey, why did you do this? What made you do this? It may have been – a coaching issue. Maybe they interpreted what, what we said the wrong way. So we feel like we made the corrections. I can't speak for um, what they did on defense. I know they go through the same procedure, but I, I haven't talked to Coach Rossi specifically about Saturday night's game. But I know we've made the corrections offensively about um, the, the issues that we had with penalties, and we're going to drive forward from there, and hopefully we learn from those corrections. Can I ask you one, about one specific mm -hmm. one? No. Please? I can't. I'm not going to ask you to comment whether You want or not me to comment on officiating? No, I'm not. Yeah, you do. I'm not paying any fines. I'll pay it I got for three you. children, that? a wife and a mother in law, and a mortgage. Car note. Somebody here tell my wife to get a job. I'm hey, sorry. Coach. Wow, this took a left turn. <laughs> hey, Coach. <laughs> coach, I got a question, though. When, you, when you're dealing with you know, certain penalties and everything, do you have a certain procedure that you go about with the players? Any disciplinary actions or certain things that you want to do with them, or you just. Sit them down and you talk to them, you know, as men or that's in any certain ways. That's not something we've done, you know, like take the kids out and run them in the sand pit yeah. for 16 hours or you've got to run a gasser for every yard of penalties that mm -hmm. you had. You know, that used to be back when you and I played, you know, yeah. people weren't watching. <laughs> um, now we sit down, we make the corrections, um, and we drive on from there. Uh, that, and that's all you can do. You know, you've got to correct the kids. Um, that's not negative reinforcement. That's showing them that, hey, this is what we did wrong. This was the consequence for the team for us doing this wrong. This is how we make this right. This is how we, do, we want it done. And that from now on, going forward, let's make sure we do it this way. Let's get one more call in before a break. That's Ryan in Piscataway. Ryan, you're up next on the Kyle Flood Show. All right. Hey, What's Coach up? Wilson, this is Ryan West from Piscataway. I, uh, I got a tour of the Health Center recently, and I was just curious, uh, what, what's your favorite department in the Health Center? <laughs> <laughs> Ryan West, you got a tour of the Health Center. What's my favorite? I, I'm going to tell you this. We've got the best operations staff east of the Mississippi. I'm not often I'm west of the Mississippi, but east of the Mississippi, we got the best operations staff with uh, Brett Arnold and Will Gilkerson, as always, and always means without exception, taking care of me and my family when they weren't living here. And uh, Ryan Glenn, uh, Ryan's a little hobbit-sized guy from Lord of the Rings. Uh, <laughs> but Something they, tells me that might have been the Ryan we were uh, talking to. And uh, we are just glad that they're around. You know, they do a good job. They do a good job taking care of the players. They do, I'm serious, they do a good job making sure the kids have good meals, good hot food, 
Um, they do a good job making sure that the kids have what they need on the road, that, that, that we travel first class. Um, uh, Will Gilkerson and his staff that does a really good job for Rutgers football. All right, we need to take a timeout. We'll do just that. We'll come back, take your phone calls at 855-FLOOD-44. We need to get into the matchup with the Penn State Nittany Lions this Saturday night, 8 o'clock, out in State College. We'll do that. Also, you can tweet us your questions at Rutgers Radio. That's at Rutgers Radio. From Quaker Steak and Lube on Route 1 in Edison, New Jersey, this is the Kyle Flood Show. Thanks to Mountain Dew Kickstart, three bros are about to become more than just a bunch of couch brotatoes. Hi! The energizing blast of Dew and Juice is entering their mouths. Soon they'll be sliding across the dance floors if it was strewn with appeals of bro nanas. Then this trio of bromeos will recite sweet broetry into the ears of any dame that will listen. These guys are professionals. Let's do this. We're coming, world! It all starts with a kick. Mountain Dew Kickstart with Dew Juice and just the right amount of kick. Now available in six flavors that taste good. Need a place to watch all the pro games? Look no further than Quaker Steak and Lou. Best Wings USA on Route 1 in Edison. 50 TVs, great game day specials starting at just $2. And the best wings in the USA with over 25 different wing sauces. Enjoy our outdoor patio and barn that's open all year round, even in the winter. Give us a call, 732-777-WING. We cater events of any size dining in or to go. Quaker Steak and Loop 561 Route 1 in Edison 732-777-WING This is the Rutgers IMG Sports Network. You know where to tune in for the game, but do you know how to bring the game home to you? When it comes to commemorating the experience, IMGproducts.net has you covered. IMGproducts.net is the place to go for official programs and yearbooks from NCAA championships, conference tournaments, and many of the nation's top universities. Relive games and championships for years to come with quality programs containing stats, behind-the-scenes stories, history, and much, much more. IMGproducts.net. We've got you covered. Looking for the best trained in the electrical business? Look no further. Our members of the International Brotherhood of Electrical Workers, Local Union 456, go through a five-year nationally recognized apprenticeship program along with OSHA safety certifications, producing the best trained and most up-to-date electricians in the area. Fiber optics, high voltage, lighting retrofits, solar energy, healthcare facilities, school construction, data centers. We do it all. We are also proud to be one of the first building trades locals to be recognized with a drug-free workplace program. We at Local Union 456 are like Coach Flood and the Scarlet Knights, trained and proven to get the job done. From Quaker Steak and Lube on Route 1 in Edison, New Jersey, this is week three edition of the Kyle Flood Show. Chris Carlin alongside Eric Legrand and Rutgers acting head coach this coming Saturday and for the next three weeks, running backs coach and assistant head coach Norice Wilson, if you're just joining us and you hadn't heard the news earlier today, uh, President Robert Barchi suspended Coach Flood for the next three games and fined him $50,000 as a result of the investigation into impermissible contact with a professor. Uh, they found that, in fact, he was in violation of that rule, but there was no academic impropriety that took place. So Coach Flood will still be working day-to-day -day as Coach Wilson um, noted earlier he'll be running practices and doing everything that he normally does just for the next three uh, games he will not be on the sideline for the Scarlet Knights. Rutgers of course is a huge matchup this coming week with Penn State out in State College 8 o'clock Big Ten Network this coming Saturday night. We've got another question here in attendance and this is one of our regulars coach oh, it yeah. is Scott Logan he is one of the one of the great members, former members, I guess, technically now of the Riot Squad, but you're always there at heart, I, I, I still be there. I'm still there whenever I can. So. Yeah. Scott, um, what's up? Not too much. Good to see you guys again. Uh, you know, Thanks, disappointed Coach Flood couldn't be here, but, you know, looking forward to seeing him in three weeks. Coach Wilson, glad to get a chance to speak with you in the meantime. Um, my question's on the defensive side of the ball, so feel free to defer to one of these guys. I know you focus on the offense, but um, defensively, the defensive line, that's not necessarily getting the pressure you'd want with no Darius Hamilton. Defensive backfield's very young. So I was wondering if you could speak to the value the linebackers provide, both in coverage and in pressure, and what importance they have against Penn State on Saturday. Well, they're, they're wholly important, not just against uh, Penn State on Saturday. No, they, they've got to be able to stop the run. Uh, and in a game against uh, a team like we played this past week, they have to do an excellent job in the underneath coverage. Um, if we're going to be a pressure team on any given Saturday or any, any given time, you know, they, we, 
we need them to be able to get home and apply pressure, make a quarterback move his feet, make him have to come off his first read uh, because we're in his face. Uh, they are vital to any defense, not just our defense. And I, I think we've got some pretty good linebackers uh, playing for us right now, and I'm sure that Coach Frazier and Coach Rossi are going to put them in the right positions on Saturday. Chris, you got anything you'd like to add to that? Well, I, I'm not a coach, so not really. <laughs> Everybody's a coach. Eric. You know, except for Saturday. <laughs> yeah, I, could, I could definitely talk to you a little bit of defensive side. You know, of course, you want to get there with your front four. If you can get there with your front four, it's going to be a nice day for you. But if you can't, then you have to start applying pressure and then sending those linebackers to different defensive backs. And it's a little bit difficult when you've got young defensive backs because then once you start sending them and different linebackers, they have more keys to read and stuff. So the main goal is try to get there with your front four. And if you can't, and you have to start pressuring them with your linebackers and the defensive backs. Awesome. Thank you, guys. Uh, good luck on Saturday, Coach Wilson. The program's obviously in great hands. Thank you very much, sir. Thanks, Scotty. We appreciate the question. I, we're going to follow that up with a question from Twitter. This is from James McGuire on Twitter. With the secondary being so young as it is right now, how do you prepare them for the hostile environment at Beaver Stadium this weekend? Well, we've done a great job so far this week with having, them, having crowd noise pumped in at practice. Uh, obviously, when the defense is on the field, the crowd noise hopefully will for Penn State. And if they're hoping their 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 team of their fans will be quiet and giving them a chance to operate uh, from under center or in the gun, whatever they choose to do. But we go out and prepare our guys, uh, Coach Wilson, the handsome Coach Wilson, as opposed to me, and <laughs> Coach Daryl Wilson. Yes, and Coach Rossi. Uh, they they coach the secondary as positions, and they go out and they, they, they're teaching these young guys the fundamentals of playing the position. Uh, they teach them, how, teach them how to pattern read. They teach them where they need to be to make the checks if the formations change with, with shifts or motions. And they try to – and they just keep giving the kids the same information over and over and uh, until it's ingrained in them and they have muscle memory, the things that they need to do to put themselves in the right position – to make the plays that need to be made. All right. Next question from a gentleman right here. We're in the number 27. Sir, yes. what's your name? Eric from Fords. Eric, how are you? How's it going, guys? First, I want to um, – Chris and Eric, um, thanks for giving your opinion in the beginning of the show. I know it's not the easiest thing to talk about, so thank you very much. I think the listeners probably really appreciated that. Well, let's, Eric loves to do it, so why not? <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, Coach, welcome. And uh, – how did the team take the news today that, that uh, Coach Flood is not going to be coaching Saturday night? I was not in the meeting when mm -hmm. I know Coach met with some members of the team. I, w I don't know if he met with the entire team. And I have not spoken with Coach or anyone on the team since this the news broke. Okay. So I can't – that's the best I can do for you, and then I apologize. And I think uh, speaking as a fan, this is a big rivalry game for, like, longtime fans. We, and I think right now this fan base can really use a victory. So good luck uh, Saturday night. Hopefully you guys can bring it back. Uh, happy ride, bus ride back to New Jersey. Thank you very much, sir. You know, we got our first taste of this last year, at least over the last uh, 15, 16 years since we last played Penn State. Uh, you got a good taste of it last year, too. What do you remember about that game just in terms of the sheer emotion and especially considering that was Rutgers' first game in the Big Ten? It was a, it was a huge night. The fans were out. Uh, it was a night game, as it's going to be this year. Uh, the kids came out pumped and ready to play. Uh, it was a hard-fought game. Uh, th I think both defenses stood up and played, and we were fortunate to go up. And uh, I was watching cut-ups the other day, and I looked at and, and on our cut-ups, you know, it flashed the clock, and I looked and saw that we were ahead 10-6 uh, with three and a half minutes left in the game. And it just kind of brought me back to last year, and I had to – snap myself out and say last year's last year nothing I can do about that now but when you see that you know when, when have an opportunity to, you're, you're up 10-6 with, with three and a half minutes left in the ball game and then you, you know the outcome you start trying to remember okay well how did this happen and you start watching the film and you, and you see how it happened and, you, and you, it starts to gut wrench you again and, and but last year's over there's nothing we can change about that game we got to get ourselves ready to play this game on this Saturday night, and that's all that counts is being 1-0 and this week. All right, we got to take a quick time out. We will get to another question here in attendance. We want to hear from you at 855-FLOOD-44. That's 855-356-6344. Also, tweet us your questions at Rutgers 
Radio. From Quaker Steak and Lube in Edison, New Jersey, this is the Kyle Flood Show. Need a place to watch all the pro games? Look no further than Quaker Steak and Lube. Best Wings USA on Route 1 in Edison. 50 TVs, great game day specials starting at just $2, and the best wings in the USA with over 25 different wing sauces. Enjoy our outdoor patio and barn that's open all year round, even in the winter. Give us a call, 732-777-WING. We cater events of any size, dining in or to go. Quaker Steak and Lube, 561 Route 1 in Edison, 732-777-WING. Hey, Chris Carlin here, and as the voice of your Rutgers Scarlet Knights, I see the fans' passion for our hometown team come to life every Saturday in the fall. UPS shares this same passion for helping businesses turn a challenge into a solution because they're not just in the shipping business, they're in the problem-solving business. Visit UPS.com slash solvers to see how UPS can help your team find the winning formula. UPS, official logistics company of Rutgers Athletics. This is the Rutgers IMG Sports Network. This commercial is brought to you by Brother International, the makers of fax, printers, multifunction printers, scanners, sewing, and embroidery machines. Brother is always at your side. You can make business cards with your name. Print from hiking, hanging frames. Sew some shades, block the sun. Keep out creepy peeping toms. With Brother at your side, always good time. You got a Brother, got a So they both match, no more mess, make the best, label on the leaf that's stress, brothers always undercover and always around. A hundred six years, better keep on counting. You got a brother, got a brother at your side, and uh, whatever follows always at the big time. With the brother at your side, with the brother at your side. We are back. It is week three's edition of the Kyle Flood Show at Quaker Steak and Lube on Route 1 in Edison, New Jersey. Have you, uh, yeah, I don't know that, have you been here before? I have not. You got to get Wings. some food, coach. Wings. French fries. Wings and fries. Okay, you both can't tell that I have a weight problem. Hey, we all I hide it well. Who are you talking to? And me. <laughs> yeah. Do not mess around, coach. Do not <laughs> mess around. Sir, what's your name? Where are you from? Another question here in attendance at, at Quaker State. He went to Paul James, Jersey. Yes, sir. With the Big Ten patch on it. My Very Taylor nice. did that. My Taylor did that. So, uh, no, I'm a rabid Rutgers fan. That's my name. Clearly. Yes. <laughs> uh, I was going to ask Coach Flood, but I'll, I'll ask you just the same, Coach Wilson. Uh, given all the off-the-field distractions, I feel like, you know, the fan base, the core fan base needs to support ever more. And is, you know, we go to the games, we tailgate, we donate, we cheer, we do everything. Is there anything else we could do to show our support for, for Coach Flood, for the program, you know, anything above and beyond the standard issue stuff that we've been doing all along? Well, I want to say, first of all, we thank everyone that supports us. And we, and we understand that there's a lot of things going on. We are really appreciative of the support that we've got from the people. I want to say after the game, after a hard fought game that was won and lost, it seems like four times, on Saturday when we were leaving, there were people in the crowd clapping for those young men that went out and put it on the line. They were clapping and they were cheering for them, and I'm sure it made those young men feel great. And if we can continue to get that from the people to come out and pack the stands and cheer for the students that play football at Rutgers, they will, they will be wholly appreciative of it, to know that they're loved not just by the family that's in the building, but the family that's around the state and in the state of Rutgers. Good stuff, coach. Good stuff. How have you seen the kids handle what's gone on here the last few weeks? And, and frankly, some shocking developments that have really come across. It's going to sound like it's a, a, a bunch of crap, but they've been unflinching. I've even brought it up in my meeting room and said, hey, are you guys distracted? They say, no. Yeah. They're on point. They're focused on what they got to get done. They got a job to do, and they got to figure out how to do it. And we only get so many hours. We get 17 hours because Saturday counts for three hours. We get 17 hours to get them right, to get them right mentally, to get them right physically, 
to, get, to have knowledge of the defense and to go out and prepare. And who do you give the credit to in that, Coach, you know, keeping them undistracted? You know, is that Coach Flood's philosophy in them and just going out there and doing what they have to do and controlling their job and not worrying about everything else? Coach, coach has taken it all on his shoulders. He's, he's spoke with the team on a numerous occasions before we start anything and said, listen, you just go play football, you just go to class, and I'll take care of the distractions on my end. And the, the kids have taken that to heart. And they just let Coach handle whatever else is going on, and they're going about their business in a business-like fashion and trying to get done whatever needs to get done to get the game plan implemented. I asked you this off the air, and, and your answer kind of surprised me. I'm going to ask you on the air. Does it change at all for you really here the next couple of days and getting ready for this game Saturday night because your role changes? No, it's not going to change for me. I'm going to get the running backs ready to go. Ben's going to get the offense ready to go. Joe's going to get the defense ready to go. Uh, Phil's going to get the special teams ready to go. We don't coach professional football, but we are professional football coaches. This is what we do for a living. Um, there will be conversations about what we're going to do on Saturday and how we're going to do it and what we're going to do in this situation and how we're going to approach it. And I'm going to take that information. I'm going to digest it, and I'm going to digest it again and digest it again until I have it down to exactly how we talked about doing it. And we're going to come out and play the football game on Saturday. Well, we were talking about crowd noise earlier, and you are on the offensive side of the ball. So when you are in a hostile environment like it's going to be on Saturday night, how hard is it for you to communicate with the offense to get the play calls in there? I, we, I don't foresee any situation that's going to impede us from getting the call ins on getting the calls in on offense. I, they can double the size of the stadium. We'll be okay with it. Mm -hmm. You know, we're going to block that out, and we're going to go out and we're going to execute in a hostile environment, and that's what you have to do. What's it going to feel like for you being back in charge in that scenario on Saturday? I thought briefly about that um, this this late afternoon. And I don't know. It, I've done it before, so it's, it's not going to be brand new. It's not going to be butterflies or bats flying around in my stomach. They're going to kick the ball off, or we're going to kick the ball off, and then we're going to put the ball down and play. And whatever situations come up, they won't be brand new situations for me being in that position. So I'll, and I'll have the insights from my conversations during the week about how we want to handle certain situations, and we'll just go from there. Is there, is there any different pregame rituals that you do as a head coach instead as an assistant coach getting ready for a game, or you keep it the same way the, the whole way? There's a, uh, there are some things I did different as a head coach than I, than I have done it as, as an assistant coach. Mm -hmm. um, as an assistant coach for a long time, I always gave my players a card about what I thought was important for that specific player to get done on that day. It would be hard to do that for, for 70 guys traveling yeah. on the road. It could probably get done. But uh, you, know, you have to think about what's the best message when you're talking to the entire team. What's the best – what's the message that the team needs coming out of the tunnel? And that you – for me, sometimes I didn't know what that message was until I came in from pregame and I saw how they warmed up and I had a feeling for how they felt coming in from the pregame warm-up. And then I kind of knew what I wanted to say to them and how I wanted to say, to say it to them and how we needed them to come out of the tunnel. One last one before we take our final time out. Special guest in attendance tonight. That yes, we do. by Quaker State and Lube. And, uh, that don't say special guest because when we say we don't say well, – can I say two things? I'm sorry to cut you. No, please go ahead. There's my <laughs> wife, Brenda Wilson. Mm -hmm. she's, uh, she's more famous than I'll ever be. Every time we go somewhere, mm -hmm. they say, hey, are you Brenda Wilson's husband? She <laughs> was on a national championship team at the University of Connecticut. What's your name again? <laughs> So she's more special than I'll ever be. But, however, now you can go ahead. Okay. And we're going to say Carrie Williams is here. I'm not going to make her stand up because she's going to kill me. Here's the story. Carrie Williams and I, she was the head golf coach at Columbia, and I was the head football coach at Columbia. And now she's the head golf women's golf coach at Rutgers. And this past Saturday, they were out at Iowa, and they shot a program low, 298, and came in second. So give her a round. Of, stand, Carrie, you might as well stand up now cause, or they're going to charge you for your food. <laughs> <laughs> She's back there in the back with her assistant coach and Pookie. Um, Pookie loves Aunt Carrie, but, you know, and Coach Flood does the same thing, and I, I did a lot of it when I was at Columbia. You got to take, you know, some interest in some of the other programs around. You know, I took my daughters last year to a soccer game. 
Uh, Coach Flood goes to different events. You know, he goes to the wrestling. He goes to the basketball. He goes to the women's basketball. Chandler he goes to the baseball. Yep. You go, go. So if you want people to take an interest in your program, you got to take a, an interest in their program. You know, it's not – it's – it's our athletic department. It's not just the football program and no one else counts. So if you want the, the, the baseball student athletes and you want the volleyball student athletes to come out and cheer for your program, then you, need, you probably need to go over there and cheer for theirs. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I, I'll say this. Kerry Williams kind of hurt my feelings. The whole time I was head coach at Columbia, she never took me golfing. She took <laughs> Coach Flood golfing as soon as she got over there. <laughs> but I worked on his golf game. I tell you, I've learned that there are some grudges that you carry. Oh, yeah, I yeah. carry a grudge. Yeah. I hold a grudge. <laughs> we'll take it. one more time out. We've got more to discuss about Penn State Saturday night. This is the Kyle Flood Show. At AT&T, we're all about the perks, like getting $300 credit per line when you switch to AT&T with a smartphone trade-in and purchase of any smartphone on AT&T Next. That's three perks in one. Get all the perks when you switch to the network with the nation's strongest 4G LTE signal. AT&T, mobilizing your world. Limited time. Each $300 requires a port eligible purchase, activation, and trading. $100 bill credit within 90 days. $200 trading credit or promo card. Taxes, fees, restrictions apply. Claim based only on national carriers. Average 4G LTE signal strength. See store for details. Need a place to watch all the pro games? Look no further than Quaker Steak and Lou. Best Wings USA on Route 1 in Edison. 50 TVs, great game day specials starting at just $2. And the best wings in the USA with over 25 different wing sauces enjoy our outdoor patio and bar that's open all year round even in the winter give us a call 732-777 wing we cater events of any size dining in or to go quaker steak and loop 561 route one in edison 732-777 wing this is the rutgers img sports network Hey, Rutgers season ticket holders, are you tired of sitting on those hard bleachers with no back support? Then we have a deal for you. For a limited time, you can reserve a night cushion for only $60 for the season. That's less than $9 a game. Permanently attached to your ticket location, night cushions provide padded comfort for your back and bottom that's second to none. So don't wait. Visit nightcushion.com. That's nightcushion with a K, dot com. Or call 800-729-0445 to reserve today. Honey, did you take care of the party rentals yet? I drove by Miller's Rentals on Route 1, but it looks like they've closed. We'll have to go someplace else. No, according to Facebook, Miller's moved to a bigger space at 160 Fieldcrest Avenue in Edison. But their phone number hasn't changed. 732-985-3050. Great, I'll call now. Miller's Party Rentals. Tents, tables, chairs, linen, staging, and more. Now at 160 Fieldcrest Avenue in Edison. 732-985-3050. Visit MillerRentals.com. Like us on Facebook and receive a discount on your first order. Go Miller's! Just a couple of minutes left for the Kyle Flood show this week. Coach Flood, the news earlier today came out, has been suspended by the university for three games for impermissible contact with a professor. Taking his spot on the sideline for the game the next three weeks will be assistant head coach Norris Wilson, who coaches the running backs. He's the former head coach at Columbia. So you're headed out to Happy Valley now this week, Coach. Uh, give me some keys to this game, this matchup on Saturday night with the Nittany Lions. Well, I, I want to say it was a caller who called in and talked about the penalties. We want to play a clean game. We don't, want, we don't need unforced errors. We, don't want, we need to make the, the team we're playing against beat us. Uh, we don't want to beat ourselves. We don't want to set ourselves back with, with offsides penalties or uh, illegal formations or turnovers. We, want, we need to play a clean game, not just this week, every week. We need to play a clean game, an error-free game. And, let, and if there are any errors, they, they can't be catastrophic, catastrophic errors that, that take us out of drives or take us out of field goal range, uh, that keep drives alive for the other team. Uh, that's our, our main focus this week, to play a clean game, to handle the environment, and to execute. Can you tell us a little bit about that Penn State defense? Yes, I can. Um, they've got some good players. they got, they got four war daddies up front, uh, Zettel uh, being uh, the, the lead war daddy. Uh, coach Spence and I, uh, Sean Spencer is the uh, defensive line coach there, and he and I used to ride together years ago recruiting. And he's come up through the ranks, and it was at Vanderbilt with Coach Franklin, and he's done a good job over there in State College getting these guys ready to play. They rotate a lot of guys on the defensive front. 
Um, and it's going to be a challenge and a challenge that I think our offensive line is going to meet uh, Saturday. Uh, they rotate a lot of players in. Uh, Zettel, someone that has to be handled. They got a kid named Nassib that's uh, leading the Big Ten, I want to think, or is in the top of the Big Ten with sacks. He's got, he's got four. He's a 6'7 kid, like 6'7, 270. Um, so our tight ends are going to have to hunker down, and our tackles are going to have to hunker down, and we have to, we're going to have to get after them. Um, and that's what the game's about. It's about going out and, and defeating the guy across from you, about blocking the guy on offense. It's about blocking the guy that you're assigned to block and beating them and moving them against his will and getting them out of the way and creating space for the quarterback to throw and creating space for the backs to run and holding up in pass protection long enough for the receivers to run the routes and get open. Um, they have a good defense, but we don't want to go and play against the worst. We want to play against the best. That's right. Coach, good Sir. luck this week. Thank you very much. Hey, good luck, Coach. Coach Norris Wilson and the Scarlet Knights this coming Saturday night out in Happy Valley. It is Rutgers taking on Penn State, 8 o'clock, Big Ten Network, and, of course, on the Rutgers IMG Sports Network. Our special thanks at ScarletKnights.com to Colin Osborne and to Tim DeMartin as well. Paul Schrager, our producer and engineer, and back at our Rutgers IMG Sports Network studios, John Essick getting, his done, getting it done as well. For Eric Legrand and Coach Norris Wilson, I'm Chris Carlin speaking, reminding you, Saturday night, Happy Valley, Pennsylvania, Rutgers and Penn State. We'll see you then. been listening to the Kyle Flood Show live from the Quaker Steak and Lube on US1 in Edison on the Rutgers IMG Sports Network. The Kyle Flood Show has also been brought to you by AT&T, mobilizing your world, and by Pepsi. Live in the moment. The beat starts at Pepsi.com. Pepsi, live for now.